In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy Spirit, and they shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us in the same spirit to be truly wise, endeavor to rejoice in his consolation, through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Anthony de Padua, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. How many of you like to eat meat? Okay. Pretty much everybody here. You notice that I raised my hand myself. Now, I would bet money that those of you who raise your hands prefer and like certain kinds of meats more than others. Now, that doesn't mean that there won't be certain moments in which you prefer and are craving a certain kind of meat, but generally speaking, you kind of have a hierarchy, if you will. You value certain kinds of meats more than others. Personally speaking, just to pick three random kinds of meats, for me, on the very bottom level, would be chicken, then above that would be pork, and on the very highest level would be beef. To take another example, those of you who love sports and are sports fans, I'm sure you like many different kinds of sports, but again, you kind of have a hierarchy, if you will. You prefer and like certain sports more than others. For myself again, to give a personal example, to pick three random kinds of sports, on the bottom would be baseball. Above that would be football, and on the highest level would be basketball. You all have your own certain personal preferences. The point is there are hierarchies that exist in the world and in our life. And thus, everything that exists in the world, things that have being, that bees, there actually is a hierarchy in the things that exist and it is called the hierarchy of being. There are actual different levels of value in regards to the things that exist in the world. And there are four levels in which everything that exists in the world that can be found on. And I'm going to speak just briefly about these four levels. The bottom level, which is the lowest level, is the level of minerals and rocks. Now let's observe minerals and rocks for just a brief moment. Minerals and rocks, they're solid, opaque, they are immovable on their own. We could go to the beach, for example, and take a rock and throw it into the ocean and try and make it skid. We could take a shell and put it in our pocket and go home and keep it as a souvenir. When we do these certain things with the things that are on this level, uh, we don't think twice about what we're doing. We do them kind of haphazardly. Why? Because we know that there really isn't much life in the things that are on this level. So first level, the bottom level. Now the second level, and whenever we go a higher level, the higher level has everything that the lower levels have but additional things. So the second level above the level of minerals and rocks is the level of plants. Let's observe plants for a brief moment. Plants, just like minerals and rocks, are solid, they're opaque, uh, but they have additional things. Plants can grow. Plants can breathe. We know through science that plants breathe carbon dioxide and they shoot out oxygen, which helps us to breathe. We can say that plants are alive and living. Why do we know we could say that? Because we could say that a plant is dead. These characteristics are not found on the lower level of minerals and rocks. So we see more life on the level of plants. Now the level above plants is the level of animals. Animals, just like the lower levels, are solid and opaque. You cannot see through them. Um, they can grow. Um, they can eat. They even uh, eat in different ways that plants do. They can chew. They could go to the restroom, if you will. 
but they have something that the lower levels do not have, and that is they have local motion. The lower levels cannot do that. Cats, dogs, giraffes, they walk, they run, fish in the sea, they swim. So we see higher level here, higher level of value, additional things than the lower levels. Now the fourth level, which is the highest level in the hierarchy of being, is a human person. The human person has everything that the lower level has, lower levels have, but one additional thing that separates him from the rest of the created world, and that is man has an intellect, the ability to think and to reason, and connected with that, he has a will. In our street language, we call it the heart, the ability to make choices and to reason, uh, the ability to make choices based on what the intellect knows. No other level below human person has the intellect and will, and thus man is set apart again from any other created thing in the world. Now, everything that I just mentioned about the hierarchy being in all of these levels is part of the natural law. What a natural law is, is that there is a law that is naturally written on the heart of every single human person. No matter what faith they follow, no matter what creed that they profess, even an atheist who doesn't believe in God, there is a law that is naturally written on the heart of every person in regards to the way that the order of the world works. Also, there is a moral natural law because man has a conscience that tells him what is right and wrong. For example, murder. Nobody could claim that murder is a good. It's a natural law that is inherent in a person's heart. And so everything that I mentioned about the hierarchy being is part of the natural law. For example, let's say we have a runner who is running outside. If the runner comes across a piece of land with little minerals and pebbles, the person's not gonna think twice about what he's going to run over. He's just gonna continue to run. But let's say if he continues to run and he sees a bed of plants, what is he gonna do? He's gonna stop, he's gonna pull the brakes, if you will. Why? Because something inside of him is telling him that there is something here that has more life. Nobody had to teach him that. It is already innate and inherent in his heart and in his mind. And thus, what is he going to do? He's going to run around it. If a man continues to run and he comes across some chickens, he's going to tell himself all the more, I need to run around these chickens. Why? Because something inside of him, again, nobody had to teach him this, something inside of him is telling him that there is something here that has a higher degree of life. And if we continue to run, obviously, I don't even really want to give this image, nobody in their right mind and in their heart and in their moral natural law would say that it would be right to walk or run over human beings. So this prime example shows that this hierarchy of being is part of the natural law. Now, allow me to take just a brief moment to show you a diagram. This here is the diagram of the hierarchy of being. We have our rocks and minerals, we have our plants, we have our animals, and we have, last but not least, the human person. It is worth mentioning that whenever we go to a higher level in the hierarchy of being, there actually is a greater unity in the very thing that is on a higher level. For example, if we take a rock and we cut a rock in half, we now have two rocks. But if we go to a higher level, for example, the level of animals, if I take a chicken and I cut a chicken in half, I don't have two chickens. I got no chicken. 
Why? Because there is a greater unity in the very thing that is on the higher level. If we reference God, who is actually off of the charts, we now have perfect unity. God is a perfect unity of persons. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He's a perfect family that cannot be divided. So again, we have our hierarchy of being here in this diagram. Now here's the problem. The culture that we live in, the culture of death, the Hollywood world, the culture of hedonism, the inordinate desire for pleasures, materialism, you name it. This whole lifestyle that is 180 degrees apart from the gospel, which is really led by the devil, tries to teach us, perhaps even in subtle ways, that man is supposed to be lowered down to a lower level than where he truly belongs. Let's take some examples. The use of illicit drugs. Let's take the example of smoking marijuana. What happens when a person smokes marijuana? Their intellect, which is a gift given to the human person that separates him from any other created thing in the world, becomes altered or lost altogether. So the person who smokes weed and gets high, they think they're getting high, but in fact, they're just getting low, you see. Same thing with alcohol abuse and drunkenness. Again, the intellect is abused. It's lost altogether, altered. Uh, the results of that reflect more of a lower level, not the human level. Speak about other things, uh, fornication, premarital sex. You know, this is uh, what we're facing very strongly today in the media and movies and shows. Uh, we see uh, people sleeping around everywhere before marriage. The attitude is, oh, nobody saves themselves for marriage anymore. Uh, that's old school. No, no, no. That action uh, reflects more of a lower level. That, that's what animals do. They sleep around. Okay. Uh, what is on the human level? God created Adam and Eve as the first husband and wife. They entered into a covenant and had responsibilities towards each other. And God told them to be fruitful and to multiply. And thus children become the fruit of their marital love. And alongside with that, responsible parenthood. That is the human level of the use of the sexual faculties. We could even talk even more about serious things, even more serious things. For example, abortion. Let's say you have a pet, for example, like a pet dog. Now, God forbid, there may be certain circumstances in which you have to put a dog to sleep, okay? But we're talking about something that is on the lower levels. In abortion, they put to sleep a human person with intellect and will created in the image and likeness of God? Absolutely not. We see an abortion, it is lowering a human person down to the lower levels. Euthanasia, this attitude of taking someone's life, maybe perhaps because uh, they are judged not to be able to contribute to society or to the world, and so they euthanize them. We're talking about a human person here, intellect and will created in the image and likeness of God. Perhaps some of you remember who Terry Schiavo was, right? Uh, she was deprived of uh, hydrogen. She wasn't even given drops of water to drink to survive and she was euthanized. Many people don't know that right next to Sherry, Terry Schiavo's bed where she was suffering was a desk and on that desk, was a plant in a vase, and they were even giving water to the plant so that it can continue to survive and to continue in existence. And right next to the plant 
was a human person and they were not even giving a human person water to drink. I think the point is made. Our culture, the culture that we live in, is trying to lower man down to lower levels from where he truly belongs. But the good news is this, my brothers and sisters, that God in his infinite love and mercy for us knew our sinfulness, knew our weakness, and God decided to come down from heaven here on earth. And when God came, he did not come as a rock. He did not come as a plant or an animal, no. God came as a man. God assumed a human nature. He ate like us. He slept like us. He had a fingerprint like us. He was like us in every single way except sin. And it is in the life of Jesus Christ and the example that he set and his teachings that are found in the gospel in which he raises man who lowered himself on the lower levels and raises man back up to the level where he truly belongs. Let's talk about specific examples. Jesus says in the Beatitudes, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. He says after he resurrected, peace be with you. My peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. Well, peace is what the first man, Adam, experienced when he experienced and had a relationship with God in the garden of Eden before the fall. Jesus is just trying to raise us back and to give us his true peace that he wants us to experience. Jesus says in the gospel, the man who looks at a woman lustfully already commits adultery with her in his heart. You see, Jesus' teaching on chastity is raising man who was on a lower level back to the lower level where he belongs because lust has everything to do with the devaluing and dehumanizing of the human person down to a lower level. To be specific about one example with lust, in pornography, it doesn't show enough. Now, what do I mean by doesn't show enough? A person's naked, right? Well, in pornography, it doesn't show the intellect. It doesn't show their heart. It doesn't show their personality. It doesn't show the totality of who they are as a human person. And thus, even pornography in and of itself falls short. All the more reason to not get engaged in those things. Jesus in the Gospels even gives us the teaching of the value of the corporal works of mercy caring for the human body. Again, in his teaching, he's raising man up to the level where he belongs. For example, the parable of the Good Samaritan. Recall the man who was traveling. He was stripped and beaten half to death. And many people neglected to help him. And there was a Good Samaritan, a Samaritan who really had no reason to be associated with this man who was beaten. But in his mercy, he bandaged his wounds and he poured oil over his wounds to help heal him. And that good Samaritan raised up that wounded man on his animal to help take care of him. And Jesus giving us this parable, what is he doing? He is raising man from the lower levels to the higher level. Basically, to translate it, Jesus is saying that we are not supposed to treat people like animals, like the roadkill that's on the side of the road. No, man has a certain human dignity that we need to take care of. So all the more reason for us to partake in the corporal works of mercy. There are so many different examples that Jesus gives in his teachings and in the gospel by his way of life. So in other words, in order for us to truly be on the level of the human person and to remain there, we always have to look to the person of Jesus Christ and to follow his ways. That is the good news, my brothers and sisters.